can, can uh, you talk about how you met Garrett and uh, and the the evolution of this project? Garrett came over one day and left this big stack of papers on the kitchen table, which was essentially a manuscript for a version of the film, and was looking for an editor. And so I read this manuscript, and it was really strange and uh, really moving in, in its way. It wasn't structured like this, but it was many many of the same elements. And uh, and so we just basically tried to work together in mutual desperation. He was totally stuck in having technical skill. I, you know, was you know had the, the technical skills and editor. And so we just together tried to learn how to put this thing together. And slowly learning a language together. It was both through uh, just long conversations and then playing with footage that we sort of, I started to understand what he was thinking and then we together sort of learned a film vocabulary that then uh, in some ways was the beginning of work I've done in the future and the work that he and I did together. So it's a very confused but um, wonderful, wonderful uh, Period. I mean, the first, the finished film is essentially the first cut of the film, uh, which is a way that I've, I've edited all my films, uh, sort of by accident, where we just did a minute or two a day going through, and then had no idea what would be, and then we looked at it at the end, and we we're like, holy shit, this is a movie. You know, this is something. There's something here. One of the things that uh, Garrett did once he, you had this film is uh, he sent it to, to Jem Cohen uh, uh, for for feedback. And Jem, I'd like to hear what what you made of this uh, package that's, that came out of nowhere. Well, first, I guess I should I should tell the little story of how it got to me. Um, I got a call one night, a, a cold call, um, and I was at home in Brooklyn from a guy I'd never heard of, Garrett. And to be honest. I, I remember, I don't know, I think it was like maybe around 9 and 9 or something, and the phone rings, and... 6 and, in California. <laughs> 6 in California. And so I go, uh, you know, this guy says, uh, you know, you don't know me, but I'm, I'm a filmmaker, I'm, I'm struggling with this project. My recollection, actually, is that he was getting negative feedback, I think, from a professor. He says, you know, I, you know, I've seen some of your work, and, and I know you don't know me, and... You know, but I just wondered if you'd look at it, look at this thing, and, and I was, to be honest, I said, I, I remember saying, I'm like, how did you, man, how did you get my number? And he said, the internet. <laughs> um, and this was back in the early days when I didn't really realize that people could do that. And so at first I was kind of like, only people in the Bay Area could do that. <laughs> I was surprised. I was kind of like, well, you know, I. I basically hesitated and, and sort of gave him a, hard, a little bit of a hard time and said, you know, like, you know, this is my home and how do you get my number? And I said, what's it about? And he, you know, he told me and I was like, you know, actually that sounds really interesting. <laughs> um, so, what the hell? Send it along. So, he, you know, he was obviously <laughs> very conflicted and, and kind of sort of stuck and he wanted he wanted to know what was wrong with the film. So I, I sat down and I put it in, and I was just like, I, I, put a, I had a pad on my knee to take copious notes, and then the movie ended, and I basically like had no notes. <laughs> I call a guy back, and I'm like, I think this is great. Like, I don't think you have a problem here. Like, I actually think that this is really kind of, this is, I was mesmerized. You know, I wanted to give you notes, and I've got like, three words written. So that's how I came upon the film, and then I did, you know, try to kind of push it a little bit, and uh, uh, the, the culmination of that, I think, was that I, I, I sent it to Chris Marker, the, yeah. um, who, who I greatly uh, revered, and and, uh, and and Marker got back to me and said that, you know, he thought it was one of the most interesting things that he'd seen about, uh, I think he said it, America. Yeah, the, the best essay he'd seen in America. Yeah, and he <laughs> said that he thought it was a masterpiece. <laughs> so that was kind of nice to yeah, pass does. along to these guys. At first I was sort of hesitant. I said, don't let it swell your head. But um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, sometimes people are just on the right track. To get to your Mr. Professor. <laughs> uh, I, there's, there's, there's a story about this film that, um, that I really love, which is 
uh, how Garrett came across that footage of the, that TV newsman going back uh, yeah. uh, to, to, to the mine. Yes, yeah, so, so that, that was amazing because we had done much, much of the film, but that section, we knew we didn't have enough stuff of the gold, of the gold mine. And Garrett had heard about this footage for, for, I think, for years, literally. But no one had it. The TV station didn't have it. The arch all the archives didn't have it. And um, so one day, when he was, we were editing, and he was on a trip to San Diego, and he came back and said, hey, man, I met this guy on the beach. And he said he had the footage. So I gave him 125 bucks, so it should be coming soon. <laughs> Are you serious? And then, uh, like, two weeks later, a VHS tape showed up. It had that footage on it. And, uh, so the guy recorded news like regularly and had that footage. So. And, he, and he had so many bad breaks, Garrett. We know to support the film early on. So this was like one of those amazing moments where it was like, holy smoke, something's, something's going right. So. so if you're looking for footage, you can go to the National Archives, you can go to the WBA Archives, or you can go to the San Diego Beach. Uh, does anyone have a question? Yeah, right here. Yeah, no, there's, there, there's an overarching project of all you know, Garrett's stuff, and it's often, uh, or in his thinking that was beyond the films he made, which is often about labor and about the idea of people caught up in webs of history that they could not see. And so in a sense, this is, uh, you know, when the Iraq War happened and we went, to, we went there, there's a feeling of, if we, these are, this, this is the same, a similar, uh, or there's some crossover of this working class community uh, it, involved in a job, a labor of occupation, and let's, let's examine that with a similar uh, sensibility, although not uh, more verite and less like an essay, but there's certainly the same sensibility that you recognize. Something that strikes me about uh, this film and Occupation Dreamland is that in, in a way they were, uh, they were works of self-appointed people. They, you know, no one was giving you an assignment uh, to, uh, to make these films. Um, can you talk about uh, when you and Garrett went to Iraq, the you know degree to which you w had no support, really? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was um, a little bit because of this film. There was, a, I think, we got the involvement from Nancy and, and Greenhouse, and we we got essentially, I think it was tape stock body art, uh, body armor, and airplane tickets. So that was it. I mean, we couldn't even rent cameras because we couldn't get insurance. So it was again us just going doing this and coming back and, and showing footage from that to then raise the money. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this film in a way proved to me that if you, you make interesting work, it somehow will find a home, a life. And so that that was gave us, you know, I don't think, I would have gone to Iraq with anybody but Garrett, I don't think. Because I wouldn't have been, not because he was expert military man, because <laughs> neither of us were that. but. Um, because I knew that we would make something that I was proud of. And then that was, and you know, there was some weird, not healthy urge to go and see what war is like, and I was very skeptical of that instinct, but I knew going with Gary that we'd be able to keep perspective on that. And uh, so, so yeah, great, great person to work with in that environment, certainly as well. And actually, one thing I want to say about cul de is uh, one of the things that prompted us to uh, show it uh, tonight is that uh, the film distributor Icarus Films has finally brought it out on DVD. One of the reasons you know, so many of you maybe have heard of this film but never seen it is because it's never really been uh, available. Now it is with uh, a nice, very nice DVD package, the essays by uh, Ian and uh, Christian Parenti. And uh, and uh, representative from Icarus is going to be here tonight and selling them out in the lobby for a special price of uh, twenty bucks. So pick it up, but also uh, because it's just out there, please you know put it on your Netflix queue, uh, uh, spread the word uh, that it's out there because um, we you know we definitely want people to discover this film.